Evacuated tube transport uses airless vacuum tubes, which move faster and use less energy to travel between destinations. Six-person capsules travel in the tubes on frictionless maglev tracks and can reach a maximum speed of 6,500 km per hour. It produces a maximum of 1 g of force at top speed. Passengers would not experience any discomfort. Evacuated tubes can be built for one-tenth the cost of a high-speed rail system and a quarter the cost of a freeway. The tubes could travel from New York to LA in 45 minutes and from New York to China in just two hours. This week, the Dutch company Paul V announced the first flights of its prototype flying car. This unique vehicle is called the Paul V-1, or the personal air and land vehicle. And it marks the start of a new era. On the ground, the vehicle drives like a sports car. Within minutes, its rotor is unfolded and its tail is extended then it is ready to take off thanks to the advanced gyrocopter technology. With these successful test results, it's proven that it is not only possible to build a flying car, but also that it can be done within existing international rules for both flying and driving. Having passed this important milestone, the company is now inviting investors to join them in creating the future. The next step will be the design of the first commercial production model of the Paul V. And first deliveries are expected in 2014. For 100 years, people have been dreaming of a flying car. And many attempts have been made to realize this dream. But now it has truly become a reality. radars and laser to, to check and make sure there's nothing coming in the way. I find myself looking. <laughs> Old habits die hard, man. They, they, they don't die. Hey, anybody up for a taco? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you want to do, do today, Steve? I'm, I'm all for tacos on my show. All right, well, let's go get a taco at the drive-thru. And we're turning into the parking lot. You know? How neat. Here we go. 
go. Now I can kind of creep along here. Does anybody have any money? I've got money. No, I've got my wallet right here. <laughs> you roll down your window and order a burrito. Yeah, push that. I'm doing very well. How are you today? This is some of the best driving I've ever done. <laughs> Ninety-five percent of my vision is is gone. I'm well past legally blind. You lose your timing in life. Everything takes you much longer. There are some places that you cannot go. There are some things that you really cannot do. Where this would change my life is to give me the independence and the flexibility to go the places I both want to go and need to go when I need to do those things. It's been nice, you know, it's, yeah. been, it's, it's been nice. I love driving. I love being able to get wherever I want, whenever I want. But living in a city means I'm one of thousands of drivers, and we're all looking for the same things. Speed, convenience, and most important, a place to park. Add in pollution and other problems, and it's easy to see why we need to find better ways to get from point A to point B. So here I am at the MIT Media Lab, where designers, artists, scientists, and engineers mix work and play to answer the question, what do you do with millions of people who all have some place to go? Vehicles are obviously a, a big part of, of cities. How can we make the car a better citizen to the city? Um, so what we started with was city car. A radical redefinition of what transportation is. Not only can it move direction like normal cars do, but all the wheels can turn sideways so that at any point in time, the vehicle could parallel park directly into a space. If you had to get out of a tight corner, the vehicle can spin on a dime. So U-turns would be really easy. U-turns are very easy. O-turns are now impossible. <laughs> so you just <laughs> do whatever you need to. And what's unique about this is we take all the stuff that's usually in the hood of the vehicle and divide them up into the four wheels. Uh, so we have the steering, the drive motor, and suspension, all built in a unit. With electric motors in the wheels, there's no need for an engine up front. And that lets you do some pretty interesting things. So this is our Haskell prototype. Um, what we've done is introduced a linkage that allows the vehicle to fold up so that it takes half the footprint. So pretty much instantly the car is half as long. Yes. Cool. So the cars are fully electric, more mobile, and they fold in stack, like shopping carts. The idea is so that when it is folded up, we can take a little bit of space and also just give some space back to the city, which can be used for more green areas. That we don't just dream this up out of thin air. Uh, it's, a real, it's a fun process to get to where we are right now. Um, and sometimes we use tools that are maybe a little more crude. Uh, for example, just using plywood or cardboard to figure out how does the vehicle fold up. Well, actually I grew up playing with Legos. <laughs> really just worked really hard at math and science classes. And then also just uh, explored other design classes too. So arts and, and etc. And what works very well for our project is we have people that have all different types of backgrounds that can influence the vehicle itself. Okay. Okay, well, 
I don't see a steering wheel here. What's going on? Yeah, it's a good point. We don't use a traditional steering wheel. Instead, we control everything through a computer. And what this does is allows a lot of freedom for design. Not only can we have the freedom of design of how we control the vehicle, now we've freed the interior up to be designed differently. We can do things where we can just walk directly out of the vehicle because you have that freedom of space. So the idea is to have stacks of city cars all over the city, right? Tell me exactly how it might work. You don't necessarily just buy one car and use it. Uh, you become a, a part of a community that has access to the vehicles whenever you want. Come up, swipe your ID card, and just take the first one off the stack. When you're done with it, you can return it to the back of that stack, or you could just return it to another stack located somewhere else. So it is a shared uh, concept. Each time you get in a different vehicle, you want it to feel like it's your vehicle. When you swipe your card, it's virtually like logging on, and the vehicle knows something about you. So it knows your favorite music, music settings, your favorite driving settings. Well, there are different technologies which we can use. So the vehicle could change color on the fly. You could have animated flames on the side of the vehicle if you wanted to. So it's really about using the technology wisely so that each time you get in it, it's your vehicle. So it's almost like having a home page where you log in and all your own settings automatically get downloaded to the car and it knows what you want. Yes. It will become my new best friend. Yes. Mm. When I was 16 and wanted to meet up with friends, it was either mom's minivan or rock the Dadillac. <coughs> now imagine, in a few years, you can get the call from your friends, find a stack of city cars, and roll out in a custom ride that will look the way you want, play your music, and get you there in style. Not only that, you're doing your part to make the city a better place. With support from the National Science Foundation, Will and his mentor, Bill Mitchell, are working hard to improve the environment around us. City Car is part of the Smart Cities Group, which aims to revolutionize the way we create and operate vehicles, buildings, entire cities. And the best part is, it never ends. You think you have a better idea? Figure out how to make it happen. Because we all have places to go.